Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new series. Now the vast majority of my time playing RuneScape has been spent in this one small area, the Grand Exchange, but that's about to change. This fellow here is Steve, or Trader Steve as he likes to be known. If he looks a bit odd, it's because when he was young he fell down a well and was trapped down there for three days. He's never quite been the same since. Ever since Steve was young, he's always had a dream of becoming Gilinor's most well-regarded traveling merchant. There's only one problem. Trader Steve suffers from crippling anxiety from his time in the well and doesn't really feel comfortable venturing far away from home until he's acquired a respectable collection of items to sell. As he believes if he doesn't do this, the other merchants will laugh at him, which they will. So to put it simply, Trader Steve is going to be starting in this area here, a familiar one, the Grand Exchange Chunk. Now for those who don't know, the land of Gilinor is actually divided into roughly 460 chunks of land. Some chunks offering a huge array of new content, while others offering almost nothing of value at all. So Trader Steve will start with access to the Grand Exchange and the Grand Exchange Chunk, but after that, each new chunk must be unlocked. To do this, Steve will need to purchase a unique rare item to add to his collection, and that's going to come from this list. This list contains every item in Gilinor worth over 1 million gold, and fun fact, there are 334 items in the game worth that much. So we'll have to be very careful with the path we take, as not every chunk can be unlocked, there's just not enough items. So there are going to be many tough decisions. And not only that, but as we progress, each chunk is naturally going to become more and more expensive. With the first ones being relatively cheap, but as we run out of unique items to buy, they're going to get more and more expensive until eventually they're going to be costing billions, not millions. And what is Trader Steve's ultimate goal? Well, to explore everything Gilinor has to offer by completing its many different quests. How many quest points can I acquire? I'm not even sure. It might be 100 quest points, 200 quest points, or maybe even a quest cape is possible. But we'll have to find out. So here we are, a brand new account and a brand new journey. The first thing we have to do, of course, on any new account, change up our key bindings. We don't want to keep these forever. But besides that, we are pretty much set to go. We are a level 3 account, all our stats are as low as possible, and we've already reached our starting area, the Grand Exchange. And we have absolutely no money in our bank. So I have some significant long-term goals, which we're going to explain a bit later, but for the short term, we need to somehow earn enough money to buy our first unique item, which will unlock us from our starting area. But that begs the question, how do we make money here with no starting gold? Well, let's see what we have to work with. So if we explore our starting area, we'll first notice that, for one, the chunk borders are actually drawn right into the map, which means it's very clear on where we are and are not allowed to go, for now anyway. Now of course we have access to the Grand Exchange, but no money, so what do we do? Well, one thing I actually noticed is in the corner of our chunk here, there is a wheat field which we can just barely get access to, and we can pick this wheat and it's not worth much, but it is worth something. So it looks like we're starting off as a farmer, but hopefully we can become well, more industrious over time. Okay, so I think that's probably good for now. We harvested 224 wheat. That will be a very nice start. So we're going to sell these on the Grand Exchange, which once again, we do have access to the Grand Exchange and we are a main account. Obviously, I'm not going to be trading money over this account or taking donations or picking items off the floor. But we do need access to the GE because eventually we're going to need to make hundreds of millions of gold and we need the Grand Exchange to be able to sell our stuff. Uh, and we're going to sell it now for 3.3k, <laughs> .3 not a ton, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And with this gold, we're going to invest it into some axes. We're going to buy an iron axe, steel axe, mithril, and maybe even adamant if we can afford it. Because although there's not much to start training on in the Grand Exchange chunk, there are some trees which we're going to go ahead and do some chopping. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so there is 15 wood cutting. That will be enough for now. We're just currently chopping regular logs. They're not worth a ton, but they are worth something. Now, interestingly, if we look at where the Grand Exchange chunk lines go to, it's just a bit outside of the inner circle here. And if we go down, there are actually some oak trees that are in the chunk, which, which is really, really handy, as we'll eventually need to level up our wood cutting quite a bit. So I ended up chopping oak logs all the way to 31 wood cutting, a pretty significant level because we get the Adam and Axe, which is quite nice. On the way to 31 wood cutting, we collected a couple of bird nests, which are nice, they're worth a bit of extra money, and it looks like about 330 oak logs. So we didn't get anything too valuable from the nests, but they are worth quite a bit on their own. If we sell all our logs and all the empty nests, we are now at a 56k cash stack, which is a pretty solid base to start from. So obviously our main priority right now is to make some money so we can unlock another chunk. But at the same time, it would also be really nice to level up our stats because, I mean, we're going to have to do that eventually. So we're going to start off with a fletching money making method that, that should level up the skill a bit as well. And that is going to be by making headless arrows. They're dirt cheap. Uh, the only issue, we can only buy 7,000 of them every four hours. So we bought 7,000 feathers, 7,000 arrow shafts, and all we have to do is combine them together. So we're just around halfway through the arrow shafts and there is 20 fletching, didn't take long at all. So we can sell the headless arrows for I think 10 each, uh, which will be a nice tidy profit of uh, 45k. Pretty good for the time we put in actually. So there we go, our arrow shafts have sold off and uh, while we were waiting we also chopped a couple more oak logs. After selling everything we have now earned ourselves our first 100k cash stack. I guess that's an achievement, I don't know. Okay, so we invested a bit of our money into some runes, and what we're going to do with this is actually attack the only attackable monster in the chunk, I think, and that is the Imp. It's lucky these things get stuck here, or else we wouldn't be able to train magic until we get a new chunk, and then we'd be kind of stuck chopping trees like the whole way or something, but our main goal here is to unlock the level 1 enchant spell, which uh, we only need 7 magic for that, so it really shouldn't take too long. Well, there we are, seven magic didn't take long at all. Now one thing that's actually nice about the imps is they now drop fiendish ashes, which aren't worth a ton, but you know, it's like a cowhide or something. So now that we have access to the level one enchant spell, our goal is to enchant some rings of recoil, but we have one small problem. We really just don't have that much money and we'll have to enchant like a dozen rings at a time, which is gonna be a bit annoying. So firstly, I'm gonna try to make some money with an interesting money making method that you can do right at the Grand Exchange, no level requirements at all. And that is gonna be creating Ultra Compost. This stuff is really easy to make, all you have to do is add two Volcanic Ash to Super Compost. And in doing so, we're gonna make about a 300 GP profit. Really simple, really easy, no experience though, so we don't wanna do this for too long. So we just created 140 Ultra Compost. We bought all the ingredients for 100k and we're going to sell it for 130k, so 30k profit. Didn't take long at all, but we're going to have to repeat this a couple times. So we're going to take our profits from our first batch and invest it into even more Super Compost. This time we can buy about 180 and we're just going to repeat the process. Okay, so we built our bank up a bit. We now have 200 Ultra Compost selling, which will allow us to invest into even more Super Compost. So because our cash stack is growing, we can now invest into 265 Super Combos. Each batch we do here, we're growing our cash stack by about 30 to 40%. We can't scale this too far though, because there are buying limits in place on the Grand Exchange. We can only do this up to about 1,000 every four hours. But let's see how far we can take it. All right, we just sold our fourth batch of combos for 300K, bringing our total cash stack up to 320K. I mean, who knew composting was such a lucrative career? Okay, so we pretty quickly worked our way up to a stack of 500 Ultra Compost we're selling back. We've just been creating this compost for a while now, but I think that's all we're gonna do for now because that should be a nice base of money to work with where we can start buying larger quantities of jewelry and well, our combos just sold like that, and we are now up to a half a mil cash stack, and that was really quick. Now, although we've made a fair bit of money, there is no composting skill, so there's really no point of doing this longer than we need to. So like I said earlier, what we're going to do now is enchant Rings of Recoil. This is almost always profitable, although to varying degrees, but 
Right now we should be making at least a couple hundred GP per enchant, which is quite nice. So what we have done is we have purchased 600 sapphire rings and 600 cosmic runes. And we're also going to buy the staff of water so we can save on water runes. But assuming we have that all equipped, we should be able to enchant all 600 of these and we should make a nice tidy profit from it as well. On top of getting a significant amount of magic experience because leveling magic is going to be really important for bossing, for teleports, for everything, and we want to level it up early. Okay, so we're about 400 rings deep into this grind, but we've just reached a really significant magic level already. 25 magic. We can now teleport to Varrock, as well as we can now use a variety of other spells as well. Okay, so we finished up our batch of rings and that uh, brought us to 28 magic actually, so a nice start to our magic grind. But how much money did we end up making? Okay, so there we go, they are sold. After claiming everything, we are up to a 627k cash stack. Pretty nice, which means we profited just a bit more than 100k from that. The money per hour is not amazing, but you know, free magic training, never a terrible thing. Now my composting roots are coming back, guys. I can't help it. We just purchased 700 super compost and 1400 volcanic ash. We've scaled up our business nicely. We have truly saturated the compost market in our chunk. Nobody, nobody wants our compost anymore. Oh, never mind. There still is a market for compost. All 700 of them sold off. After claiming it, we are up to nearly an 800k cash stack. So close to our first mill already. And honestly, we're doubling down here. We're buying a thousand super compost and 2,000 volcanic ash. After we leave our grand exchange chunk, we're not going to do anything like this anymore. No experience is quite a drawback, but for now, it's one of our better options. So around 20 minutes later, and there is a thousand ultra compost done. And I think if we dump this on the Grand Exchange for just about 900 each, that will bring us enough money to give us our first mill cash stack. Exciting stuff. One mill, 6k. And that should just be enough money for us to purchase our first unique rare item. Now when I started the series, I added every single item in the game at the time that was worth 1 million gold or more to a favorite list on the OSRS Wiki Marketplace page. So that is how I'm keeping track of things. This list of items is the one I'm trying to collect. There obviously can be quite a bit of fluctuation in items that are worth a mil, especially on the low end, but to keep things consistent, this is a set list of items I'm going to be collecting. But I will never pay less than one mil for an item. So that brings me to a bit of strategy. Early on, I believe the best strategy is to purchase cheaper items, obviously. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But the reality is that some unique rare items are very useful while others are pretty much just bank fillers. So ideally I want to pick an item that will be somewhat useful and cheap. So right now we're looking at the bottom of our 330 something item list and one item that kind of jumped out to me is the Obsidian Cape R. I won't be getting the Fire Cape for a while at least, it's quite a few chunks away. So this will be my best cape actually for the foreseeable future. It's around a mil right now and we're going to try to buy it for 1 mil and 6,000 GP and see if we can get it. If we do, we can unlock our first new chunk. Ooh, look at that. I heard the noise. I'm so excited. We got our very first item, the Obsidian Cape, for just above 1 mil. And that is now the first item that Trader Steve has in his Merchantine collection. Also quite fashionable. So the time has come for us to pick our first new chunk. Now how exactly is the chunk selection process going to work? Well, I am going to be choosing the next chunk. I know some people will do it randomly, but for the objective of the series and the difficulty, I think having some agency is going to be necessary. Now the way the chunk selecting process works is once I have a new item, I can unlock a new adjacent chunk. So we have one of these four options. There's one exception to this rule though, I've allowed the use of ships to get places and other natural forms of transportation such as canoes, minecart systems, and stuff like that. However, every other type of transportation including magic, fairy rings, and jewelry cannot be used to unlock a new chunk. So I can't simply teleport to Ardoin and unlock the chunk that way. So that brings us to our chunk selection. Now, to begin with, one thing I definitely need to try to avoid are dead chunks. These are areas in the game that are accessible, but don't provide anything of value, like they aren't involved in a quest location, they don't unlock a boss, or they unlock something that I don't strictly require. So for example, much of the wilderness 
involves dead chunks. There's just nothing in it. We certainly don't want to go there. The other three options are valid, but I think the best option to start off with is the Edgeville chunk. The Edgeville chunk contains quite a few useful things such as a furnace we can use to make some money on, as well as the Edgeville dungeon. Now for the purpose of a chunk, whenever you unlock it, it also includes any areas accessible underground as long as the access point is within a chunk you have access to. So if you unlock this area, we get the Edgeville dungeon, and I think that alone makes us the clear choice for now. Now if we have a look at the chunk here, the first thing I'm really interested in is this furnace. I think we can use it for some really easy early game crafting training uh, that will also help us rebuild our bank because one issue uh, we have is we have no money left. I spent all of it on our cape and uh, well maybe we should have saved some but too late now. This chunk also has actually some attackable NPCs in it which is great. We'll be able to start some combat training. Okay so we managed to scrounge together uh, about 20k so I guess that'll have to do us for now. To start using the furnace, we are going to need a few base crafting levels, so we're going to go ahead and buy some uh, leather and a needle, and we're going to use this, I think, all the way till 7 crafting, at which point we'll be able to make the gold bracelet. Okay, so there we are, 7 crafting, we can sell back our leather gloves for absolutely no money, but that's okay. So our bank right now, 7,000 GP, we don't have much to work with. We're going to go ahead and buy a bracelet mold for 700, oof, oh my god, we just got ripped off on that. We're gonna go ahead and invest the rest of our money into gold bars that we can only afford. Oh god, like 75 of them or something. But uh, yeah, we're rebuilding here. So a very simple method, we just go to the furnace with our bracelet mold and gold bars and we just make a full inventory of gold bracelets. Each gold bracelet is worth 150 GP and the gold bar is only about 100. So we're making some money and we'll be leveling up crafting which is really nice as well. Okay, so there's our 73 gold bracelets, huh? So we're gonna insta-sell them for about double the money, so actually pretty good. And we're gonna invest that money straight back into gold bars. Well, there we go, 20 crafting already. It really doesn't take that long. Uh, we can now make sapphire jewelry, which we'll probably do at a certain point. We need way more money to even think about doing that. We're still very poor, but the crafting levels are coming along. Okay, so we've been making these for quite a while. We just hit 35 crafting all from gold bracelets the entire way. We've managed to bank 450 of them, uh, which if we insta-sell those, uh, we're gonna get about 80,000 GP back. Uh, so we built up a bit of a bank here, not much, but enough for now. Now, one thing I noticed right away once we unlocked the Edgeful Chunk is there was a really low-level NPC that we can kill. It's not chickens, it's not cows, but low-level men. Uh, but that will have to do. Now we do of course have access to the Edgeville dungeon, but everything in there is too high level. We need to get some base combat training out of the way first. And I think men are definitely going to be our best option here. So we're going to go ahead and buy some low level combat gear. A amulet of glory, a combat bracelet, and some scimitars. And I guess some armor as well. I mean, they're pretty weak, but so are we. So we're going to buy up some low level iron armor as well. So yeah, here we go. We got our iron armor on and our 1 million GP cape, which, uh... Hopefully no one asks about. So we are geared up and ready to go in this random building here. There are quite a few men. Hopefully we can get some herb drops. That would be really nice. We have like no money. So if we get a Renard drop, I mean, that's going to triple our bank right now. So it's actually a kind of decent moneymaker as well. So I've been killing these uh, men for quite a while. Uh, we're actually up to 20 attack and 20 strength already. We've been picking up all of the valuable herbs off the ground. And if we go have a look at our bank right now, it looks like the herb tab is worth about 50,000 GP. So, you know, 50k an hour, it's not great, but it's definitely better than nothing. Alright, so how much money do we have to work with here? We sold everything off and it looks like about 80k. So while I'm trying to figure out my next money making method, I'm just going to go ahead and make some arrow shafts, why not? And uh, hopefully by the time I'm done, I will have thought of uh, something better. Okay, so I'm actually really excited about this one. We ended up buying 300 cut jades and what we're going to do is turn this into silver jewelry. Thanks to our higher crafting level, we can now actually just do this right away. And what we're going to do is actually make some jade necklaces. 
each one we make is actually going to earn us quite a bit of money. The only possible issue is I'm not sure how many people are buying these, uh, but if they don't sell for some reason, we can always just enchant them and turn them into necklaces of passage, uh, which should sell a lot quicker. Okay, so we're just going to finish up our final inventory here, and uh, look at that, we're actually up to 44 crafting already. Okay, so we crafted 400 jade necklaces, and hopefully they sell. Alright, so that actually didn't take that long at all. We sold 400 of them for 800 each, and I was actually able to pretty much double our money. We started with 150k after crafting everything, we're now up to 300k. We just have to do that like 100 more times and we'll have a billion gold, easy as that. So yeah, we're literally just going to kind of double this again. We're going to go up to 700 jades and 700 silver bars. And I think I'm just going to repeat the exact same process. We're buying the ingredients for about 400 and we should be able to sell them for around 800 after smelting them. So we finished up with another 700 jade necklaces. And I think we're actually up to nearly, uh, yeah, 50 crafting almost. Levels are flying by. Um, we're going to try to dump these in here for a similar price, around 800 each again. Okay, so I've been waiting here for quite a while, no luck, uh, so what I've actually decided to do is I'm just going to go ahead and enchant these now. We're not going to get a significant amount of profit from doing this, uh, but we are going to get some magic experience and hopefully this will allow us to sell them way quicker. Uh, so similar to emeralds, we're just casting the level 2 enchant on them, uh, but hopefully this will make them more desirable. Alright, so I kind of split the difference on enchanting them. I bought 350 cosmic runes because that's all I could afford, we're still really poor. Used that to enchant 350 necklaces of passage, sold the rest, and now we're also able to sell these necklaces for about a thousand each versus 800 before, so it's a bit of a profit. And uh, we also almost got to 40 magic already, so I think that was worth it. Okay, so they're all sold off, and after claiming it, we're up to 673k. So we've actually worked our cash stack up quite a bit already. What we're gonna do is now invest that into a thousand cut jades at about 400 each and a thousand silver bars at about a hundred, so they've actually gone up in price a little bit. But we're going to do something slightly different. We're also going to buy a thousand balls of wool, and if you're wondering why, it's because we're actually going to try to make amulets of chemistry. And we're going to go through the entire process by hand. First, we need to turn all our jades into jade amulets, then we need to string them with the balls of wool, and then we need to enchant them. It's a three-step process, it's going to take a while, but I'm hoping we should be able to make a fair bit of money from this. So like I said, step one, we gotta turn all of these into unstrung jade amulets, which is a very similar process to what I was doing before. And this is also giving us like 70 crafting experience per amulet, so it's gonna add up really quickly. I mean, we're gonna get 70,000 crafting experience from this grind, so it's gonna get us quite a few levels. Alright, so we are finally done. That took about an hour-ish, and uh, we also got up to nearly 55 crafting already. Tons of crafting levels from this, which is kind of nice. So now if we check our bank, you can see we have a thousand unstrung jade amulets. And now for the next step, we need to add the balls of wool to them. Okay, that was actually a bit quicker, at least only half an hour to string all those. And although it was very low experience, it did actually manage to just push our way up to 55 crafting as well. Alright, so we're finally ready for the last step here, enchanting all of the amulets. This will turn them into amulets of chemistry, which last time I checked we're going for well above a thousand gold each. So once we're done all these, we should definitely have at least a one mil cash tag, if not more. Okay guys, there we go. Final inventory is done. Uh, also got us to, I think, 46 magic. But most importantly, we have a thousand amulets of chemistry, and I'm very curious how much are they going for right now. We're going to price check one actually right now for 1440. That's actually really good. Okay, we're going to try to greed out a little bit more money here. We're going to put it in for 1530 because that's closer to the actively traded price, but we'll have to see if that works. Okay, so I was waiting for the Amulets of Chemistry to sell. Uh, they haven't yet, but while we were waiting, we did manage to get 20 defense. Once again, just killing these level 3 men. Pretty slow combat training, but we're getting a bit of money from this as well, and we need a bit higher combat stats before we can take on the Edgeville Dungeon. But once I can, there's quite a few interesting monsters in there that we can kill for a decent amount of money, and I'm pretty excited to try them out. Okay, well, our greed didn't pay off. I guess we're just going to dump it in here for the insta-sell price, whatever. Okay, so we sold them for uh, uh, Leet, looks like, at uh, 1337 Still a good amount of money, and that's pushed our cash stack well over a mil, which you know what that means, we can buy another item. 
So I've kind of pondered over what exactly could be useful in the near future here, and I've decided on the Duroc plate body. Currently it's going for a bit above a mil, closer to 1.1 mil, but that's okay, it's actually a useful item. There are a few cheaper items that I could theoretically go for, but I'd rather have something that's actually going to have a purpose at some point, and it's really not that much more. So that leads me to our next chunk that I need to select. Now which one do I choose? Of course I do have access to these adjacent chunks once again. And there are a few good options here, but something I realized yesterday is there's a chunk that I 100% have to unlock, it's way too risky not to do it, and that is actually the Lumbridge Castle chunk. Now I'm not choosing this chunk because of any specific resources it has access to, although there are some useful things there. I'm choosing it because if I die, right now anyway, the account's over. I mean I spawn in a chunk I don't have access to, and that's game over. So we have to unlock this chunk, and there's one mechanic in the game that is actually going to make this way easier than it would normally be, and that is the Wacka Canoe. Now I mentioned at the start that there are actually a few exceptions uh, to how I can unlock chunks via traveling. So stuff like a boat, which is often required to get to new areas, and also canoes. Now I just noticed that conveniently there actually is a canoe access point in the Edgeville chunk. The only problem right now is I don't have a high enough woodcutting level to go all the way to Lumbridge, so we'll actually have to go level it up a bit first. So we were chopping away at these oak trees for quite a while and we went all the way from 30 wood cutting to 42 which is really handy. We can now use the canoes to go to Lumbridge as well as we also now have access to the rune axe. Everything's coming together guys. There we are finally the rock plate body has been purchased. Actually took quite a while to get that but we did get it for our original price of around 1.1 mil. And that is our now second item added to our collection, so it's time to unlock our new chunk. So we have the Lumbridge chunk unlocked and now all we have to do is whack it on over there. Very handy because it saves us like four chunk unlocks or something of just going straight down. So I am really happy for this canoe system. So here we are, the most iconic chunk in the game probably, the Lumbridge Castle spawn area. So thankfully now if we die venturing off into the Edgeville dungeon, we will spawn in an area that we are legitimately allowed to be in. So with that unlocked, we now have a safety net in place if we die, as well as it offers a pretty good launching off spot for the next short term goal for this account. Now in the early game it's totally fine for me to kind of thrift shop money makers, just kind of do a bit of everything to earn a mil or a few million GP to get a new chunk, that's fine. But eventually I'm going to need to unlock some of the premier money makers and I was really struggling to think of something that would offer a competitive money maker but would also be relatively nearby. I mean sure we have something like Zalra which doesn't take a ton of skill or quest requirements but it's all the way over in the elven land. That will take dozens of chunks to unlock and while we might go there eventually it's a long ways away. Now I've been thinking about this for a while and I've decided on my next goal being the Temple of the Eye quest. This will give me access to the Guardians of the Rift mini game which will be a great way to level up runecrafting, make some money on the side, as well as unlock the runecrafting skilling outfit. This outfit will be integral for my first major money maker which is actually going to be abyss runecrafting. The access point for the abyss is very close actually and it will unlock a very lucrative money making method once I get my runecrafting up high enough. Now Temple of the Eye is a really low level quest, but from my estimations I think it's still going to take around 15 chunks to unlock, or 15 new unique items, so it's actually quite an endeavor still, and one that we're going to get started next time. Thanks for watching as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the first episode, and I will see you next time.